Turing 6502, zero page addressing. I'm Dr. Matt Regan, and let me warn you, we're going pretty deep into nerd sovereign territory with this video. You'll need to bring your own pocket protector for this one. Here's our trusty Turing 6502 architecture. On the left, we have the rule book, and this is a finite state machine consisting of two large EEPROMs and four octal D type flip flops to capture the output. 13 signals from these octal D type flip flops feed back into the EEPROM, and this represents our current rule number or state. We combine this with the output from the notepad, which is an 8 bit signal, and this determines our behavior for the next cycle, which includes the next state number and the symbol to write on the notepad. On the left, we have the notepad itself, and this comes in two parts. The upper part I've called the 6502 notepad, and this contains a number of variables which correspond to the registers inside the 6502. The lower notepad represents the 64K Apple main memory, and it has two special registers that allow random access into this memory. These are called the memory address registers. In this part of the playlist, I'm showing the rules and state machines required to emulate the addressing modes of the 6502. This is Leonid Fibonacci, and I think it's written somewhere that every homebrew CPU has to make a reference to Fibonacci somehow. Apart from the Fibonacci sequence, what he's famous for is introducing Arabic numerals, zero, and the decimal place into the Latin system. So given that this video is on zero page addressing, Here's my hat tip to Leonid Fibonacci, without whom we might not have zero page addressing, or anything else that relies on the concept of zero. We've already gone over a number of the 6502's addressing mechanisms. In the last video, we looked at absolute, absolute x, and absolute y. Now we're going to look at the zero page addressing schemes. And once you've mastered these, you've really mastered the 6502. And while they are complex, they are very powerful. The first three zero page addressing schemes are actually very similar to absolute addressing, but there is a little bit of added nuance in how the offsets work. This mode, indirect Y indexed, is very commonly used in video games to write to the screen, and it effectively allows the zero page to act as a large bank of address registers. Now, I don't want to call this mode X indexed indirect a waste of silicon. Let me just say though that it took a long time to find a bug in this code because it rarely got touched in the emulator. Now this isn't a criticism of the original designers. I'm telling you this because we have a 45 year history of software written for the chip. So when we design a 6502 system now, we should take this into account. And finally we have indirect, which is really only used for jumps. For the purposes of this video, and this video alone, I've called the zero page the Fibonacci page. Now that's not official, in fact, I just made it up right now. But I don't want to write the code to do a Fibonacci sequence. So this is my tribute. Mind you, if you see the Fibonacci sequence with two large prime numbers and tap off the bottom bits, you actually get a pretty good pseudo random number generator. But I digress. So what exactly is zero page you might ask? Well, it's quite literally the system memory between 0000 and 00FF. And what's so special about it? Well, nothing really. There's no intrinsic difference between this page or any other page in memory. It's just that the 6502 happens to have a number of instructions that reference this page and this page alone. And these instructions only require two bytes instead of three. STA00NN is functionally equivalent to STANN. Here in this fragment of code, we have the STA0 page instruction at 7AFA. We want the 52 hexadecimal address to be copied into the EAL register, which will be reflected in the MARLO register. Because we know that this is a zero page instruction, we can load EAH with zero, which also gets reflected in MAR high. Our effective address register and memory address register now both point to the memory location 0052. Then we take the value 10, which is in our accumulator, and store it at this location 0052, overriding the zero that was already there. I'll zip over this pretty quickly, but again, we're going to look at the SDA, LDA, and CMP instructions. We add them to our switch statement in the decode phase, and for these particular instructions, we need to compute the effective address, so we go directly to the mode zero page function. Here, we increment the program counter, read the operand into EAL, load zero into EAH, then call second pass decode. In second pass decode, we again add these instructions to the switch statement, 
but this time we call a function specific to the instruction itself. And this function assumes that the effective address has already been computed and stored in the EAL and EAH register. And in the case of SDA, we just write the value in the A register to the memory location pointed to by the effective address registers. Let's look at our state machine equivalent. At state 28, we add in these extra arcs for these three instructions. Well, in fact, state 28 should have an arc for every instruction opcode. But each of the three we've just added, directly called the mode zero page state machine, it increments the program counter, then does a read, and the value read from main memory goes into EAL. Then we deliberately place a zero into EAH. After that, we jump to the second pass decode state machine. We add an arc for these three opcodes into the second pass decode state machine, but this time they jump to different machines relevant to the instruction itself. So for example, if we see an 85 hex, we jump to instruction store. And instruction store is the same as we've seen before. Now, just to keep me honest, you can compare the states that we actually move through on the machine to the states we move through on the diagram. By the way, I've included a link to the PDFs for the diagrams below. I said previously that STA-NN is functionally equivalent to STA-00-NN, but STA-NN, X is not equivalent to STA-00-NN, X, and there is no STA-NN, Y instruction. So what's the difference between zero page X and absolute X addressing? In absolute X addressing, the X is added to the address with carry. So that means with the example of 00NN, X, the resulting address range could be 0 through 1FE. However, in the zero page version of the instruction, the addition is done without carry. So the resulting address will always be in the range of 0000 to 00FF. Now this is quite subtle, but it is an important difference. Let's look at an example. Here we see the instruction STA84, X at 871C. The first thing we want to do is move the hexadecimal value of 84 at 871D into the EAL register. Because this is a zero page address, we move zero into the EAH register. We add this to the 4F in the index X register, and we store the result, DE, in the EAL register. These values are reflected in the memory address registers, and we use these to point to the memory location 00DE. Then we take the zero in our accumulator and store it at this location. Now this example was taken from Pac-Man, and if I was making one up, I probably would have shown that the carry from the addition doesn't increase the EAH register. Let's look at these three instructions. Add them to our decode switch statement. Let's go over the mode zero page X instruction in a bit more detail. First, we increment the program counter. Then we do a main memory read and put the value in EAL. We set EAH to zero. Next, we do an 8-bit addition of EAL with index X and store the value in EAL. And we ignore the carry out from this addition. Then finally, we call second pass decode. Second pass decode is very similar to before. We add these three instructions to the decode. And finally, for store, we write the value of A into the address pointed to by the effective address registers. Looking at our state machine, we add these three opcodes as arcs out of rule 28. In the mode zero page X state machine, first we want to increment the program counter. Then we want to read main memory and store it in EAL. Clear EAH. Next, we encode the value of index X into our state number. Now, obviously, this is pretty expensive and takes up 256 states. We jump into the second pass decode machine. These three opcodes are added to the decode. Then we call store, which writes the value into main memory. This should all be looking very familiar by now, hopefully. According to our state machine model, we should be stepping through the states 333, 335, 338, and 341. This means it looks like our zero page X index mode of addressing is working correctly. Some instructions do use index Y addressing in zero page, but it's essentially the same as the index X case. Well, I hope that's all been a good warm up for you, because now we're going to move into the more interesting instructions. Let's start with indirect Y index. This is a two byte instruction, and the way it works is zero page address and zero page address plus one point to a base address. This base address is 16 bits, then we do an unsigned 8 bit addition with the index Y register. 
but this time we do it with carry. This base address plus y is our effective address, which is then used by the instruction in second pass decode. This mode is used extensively by the Pac-Man code, particularly for writing pixels to the screen. Let's walk through an example. Here, the address 6985 contains the opcode 91, which is STA using the indexed Y in direct mode. Here, the zero page address is 12. So we look up 12 and we store the contents, which is A8, in our EAL register. We then go to the next address, which is 13, and store that in our EAH register. So now we have a 16 bit address stored in our EAL and EAH register. Then we do an 8-bit add with the index Y register with carry. The results stored in our EAL and EAH register. Then next we store the contents of A at that main memory address. And in fact in this case, it's a video memory write. We'll look at these three instructions in our simulation again. Now the first thing we do in mode YID is increment the program counter to get us to the address. We read that value into our EAL register and we clear the EAH register. We then do a main memory read and store this value in EBL. Now this is really the reason we have an EBL register. We still need to use the EAL register for addressing. We increment EAL, keeping it in zero page. Then we read the next value into EAH. We can do this because we don't need to access zero page anymore. We transfer the contents from EBL to EAL. This gives us our base address. Finally, we add index Y to EAL and EAH with carry. This is now our effective address, and we go into second pass decode, which is much the same as it's been previously. Looking at our state machine model, we add the opcodes as we've done previously. Once in mode YID, we first increment the program counter. We do a main memory read into EAL and clear EAH. This contains our zero page address. We then do another main memory read into EBL. We then increment EAL. Oh look, I've just discovered a mistake. Turns out I've been doing this with carry. Now I've never run into a problem with this so far, but I probably should correct it. I'm quite sure there's no carry. Then we do a main memory read into EAH. This is quite a big state machine, so now I need to move over to the next page but I'm still on state 1493. I want to transfer the contents of EBL into EAL. So first, I convert the value of EBL into a state. Then based on that state, I write into EAL. Then I read index Y and convert that into a state. By using the state number, I can effectively add index Y to EAL. Then I update second pass decode as I've done previously, and instruction store stays the same. Rather than having me read out all the states we should pass through, I'd strongly encourage you to look at the state diagram and see if you can figure it out yourself. It'll make a lot more sense to you if you can predict what states we should pass through and then see if we actually do that. The main goal here being for you to deeply understand this machine and therefore the 6502, albeit from a different perspective. Now I want to talk about X indexed in direct mode. Again, this is a two byte instruction with the opcode followed by the zero page address. The idea is that we add index x to the address in the instruction. This forms a new zero page address. We then do a read from this address and store the value in EAL. We then do a read from the next address and store that in EAH. Pac Man doesn't use this addressing mode, and I looked high and wide to find some code that did. I looked everywhere for the store instruction using this addressing mode, but I don't think even Terminator uses this instruction. Let's walk through it diagrammatically, but this is a made up example, it's not actually from real code. Here we see the opcode 81 with the address 12. We add this to the 24 stored in the index X register, and we store the result 36 in EAL. We then use this EAL to point to the zero page again, and we want the 10 at 36 to be stored in EAL and the 30 at 37 to be stored in EAH. We then write the value in the accumulator into the main memory address pointed to by EAL and EAH. So again, by way of example, we'll add these three instructions to our switch statement. And now we really get into the meat of the X indexed indirect instruction. First, we increment the program counter. 
We do a main memory read and store the value in EAL, and we zero EAH. Then we do another main memory read and store the contents in EAL. I want to add the contents of index X to EAL, but I don't want to spend 256 states to do so. Instead, I'm going to do two 4 bit additions, which only cost me about 33 states. Now, this does take an extra two clock cycles, but given that this mode's barely used, I don't really care. So now I do a main memory read storing the contents in EBL, increment EAL without carry. Next, I perform a main memory read storing the value in EAH. And now I just need to transfer the value of EBL into EAL, but I'm going to do this four bits at a time as well, just to save space. By now, our computed effective address should be in EAH and EAL. Then we call second pass decode, and the rest should look pretty familiar. From a state machine perspective, the first thing we do in mode XID is increment the program counter. We then do a main memory read into EAL and clear EAH. We convert the lower four bits of index X into state. Then we use this state to do the add to EAL. Next, we read the upper four bits of index X and convert this to state. Then finally, we do the add on the upper four bits. We do a main memory read into EBL. We then increment EAL without carry. And then we do another main memory read into EAH. And then finally, we transfer the value of EBL into EAL, but we do this four bits at a time to save space. Finally, we update second pass decode, and STA stays the same. Now, the fine details of zero page addressing on the 6502 can be a bit of a dry topic, but the good news is we're done. So now we can apply all these addressing modes to the arithmetic operations like add, subtract, and the logical operations like and and or. So well done if you stuck with me through to the end, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Leaving a comment also really helps as well.